Hello, everybody. Just some quick words from the Armchair Generals. I wanted to give a shout out to Herrick's Games and Hobbies. They will be donating all their profits until the end of September to the Fire Relief in California. And they will be specifically helping um, everybody, but also the gamers who are in the areas who've had their homes destroyed and their lives just completely devastated. They will be reaching out to those people. If you happen to be one of those people and you can reach out to them, please um, get into contact with Herrick's Games and Hobbies. And we will be putting a link in our show description. So back to our um, our intro to 40K um, here from the Armchair Generals. We're kind of moving on to talking about uh, Sticker Shock and, you know, the initial cost of the hobby uh, comparison to some of the other hobbies that folks have out there. Um, you know, 40K, there's no doubt about it. It is. It can be and probably will be for the foreseeable future a fairly expensive hobby to get into uh, there's uh there are some ways around that you know there's a pretty good secondary market for a lot of the minis so don't be afraid to check that out but uh one important point to make is that this is a hobby this is probably something that ideally you're going to stick with for a long time i mean like we said earlier We've all been at this for at least 20 years, if not more. And, um, you know, most of the hobbies that you do, you know, nowadays, they've got some price associated with it. I mean, you know, woodworking is one. Yeah, you, know, you got to set up a whole, sh you got, most people build a separate building on their house to accommodate their, you know, saws and planers and all that other stuff that they have to have with that. Um, I mean, you know, spending upwards of 500 bucks when you've got to consider, you know, making an addition to your property, not too bad a comparison when you think about it. You know, and there's, there's, like you were saying, plenty of ways to get an army without spending that much money. And over the years, GW has uh, made it even more affordable with their gets, um, their start collecting boxes. Most of them, most of them. Not all, but most are extremely good value. Or even as a veteran hobbyist, I will pick those up and buy them individually just because you get so many, much more stuff with it. Yeah. Like, I was just looking at getting two squads of um, an army to start for Crusade, and I was like, I might as well get the start collecting box because for 10 more bucks, I get the character, which I don't need, but I also get a Dreadnought unit. And the Dreadnought unit is X price. I don't remember what they are. But definitely worth ten dollars. Yeah, definitely. usually result in getting one of the units in that get starting box, get started box for free. I mean, if you price out, you know, the individual cost of each unit, I think that's what me and Crash have figured over the time. Usually, the character's free in the in the t overall cost, but some of them it's even more. Yeah, and right then now, talk, talk with your local store too because they may even have discount programs. Yeah. If they have a loyalty rewards program, a lot of local shops will do that. You spend X amount of dollars, you get a percentage off uh, on a purchase or a, an actual monetary amount on a purchase. Um, the local game store here where El Scotto and I live, you spend $100 and you get $10 off on a purchase. So, you know, it's, it equivalates to 10% off of your purchases. It just only applies to future purchases, which encourages you to spend more, but it supports your local store. All right. There's another important point to make here. Uh, a lot of your friendly local game stores are going to have their hand in the local used market there where you're at. Um, I highly encourage you to check it out because I know where Crash and I live. Uh, that's actually one of the first things we check when we walk into the game store is the used shelf because I've been amazed and um, like for instance, when in eighth edition, when the Primaris first came out, I actually snagged some of the uh, Primaris Hellblasters uh, for pretty cheap, and they were already painted. I mean, not in the, my faction colors, but if I needed to use them in a tournament, I could have literally gone and bought these guys, and on the board they went, and bam, in in the game, no extra work needed. And I mean, just the other day we were there and they had most of a, 
of a small Drakari army. Uh, the, the, you know, evil elves, they had several squads of the troops. They had several leech choices. They had some characters and they were all half of the box price because they're used miniatures. So you can, if you want, you can get involved much cheaper between that and eBay. Yeah. There's eBay, you have companies like Frontline Gaming who have a secondhand shop that yeah. they do really good sales on. Um, there's also Facebook selling groups too. Just be oh, careful. Yeah. Make sure you use a payment protection like PayPal. Um, yeah. But they, there are easier ways to, you know, get into the hobby. And then when you look at the costs associated, we, we all, I'm sure, have miniatures that are over 20 years old now. Like some of my miniatures can go and buy alcohol at the store. That's how old they are. Yeah. Um, and I still have them. So when you break that cost down ratio, sure, okay. A decent starting army, let's just say you have a $200 budget, you can get something really nice. Where now, nowadays, that won't even buy you the brand new video game console and games. Yeah. That won't, that might get you um, a few rounds of golf at your, at your local driving range. That will not even get you into the scuba market if that's your hobby. Yeah. You could, might, could buy some flippers for 200 bucks. Um, no, and, and the legacy of the models is, is an important thing. I mean, there's many other games. I mean, I, I, I love Magic the Gathering. Absolutely love the, love the game. Haven't had a lot of people to play it with lately, so I haven't been collecting recently, but I do love the game. But you have to buy cards constantly when you play. Whereas Warhammer, when you buy a box of guys, you have that box of guys. As Nova said, I have Space Marines on my shelf that I've owned since day one, and they are still usable. I can still pull them out, put them on the table. They're ugly because they're painted terribly, but I can put them on the table and I can play them. And there's no problem with it. Um, now, you know, depending on the edition, the codex, the rules at that time, they may or may not be as good as they used to be. But, you know, things also do change. We've got a lot of models recently that were not doing so well, and now they're getting a bunch of rules changes, and they're very much back in the game. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I can, I guess, you know, third this uh, here instead of second. Um, I actually have the first mini I ever painted for 40K still, just to remind myself how far I've come as far as painting skills go. But um, I, you know, when I used to live in Denver, um, I would go to the game store there and one of the guys that I had met was a native fella and he had been playing since the game came out in 1986. And he literally had the exact same Space Marine Army from 1986 the only thing he had ever had to do is swap weapons because uh you can't use las guns on space marines anymore but he, uh, i don't know i'm not a huge fan of the las gun personally but i mean they have their place in the imperial guard but that's just me uh but the fact remains that he has the exact same hello kitty flavored space marines that he has had since 1986 uh that he can put on the tabletop and no modifications necessary. I'm sure he's really thrilled with the whole mini Marines getting two wounds thing too, because then he doesn't have to buy new minis. <laughs> but I mean, really that, that goes to show he's got first edition space Marines that he still puts on the tabletop. Yeah. And legally he can. Yeah. Or you try to do that with magic and, I mean, yeah, the card may be playable after their gigantic purge of their meta uh, here recently, but um, you're going to be playing in some sort of classic format that not everybody plays. It may not be tournament legal. It's, it's not even a magic either. You could go yeah. to a historical miniatures game and oh, yeah. say, I have the, the British Army of 1812. Better not bring that for the 1776 battle. Yep. Where with Warhammer, it's all interchangeable and doesn't really matter, which is one of its many, many strengths. Oh, yeah. And, and there are, you know, in, in comparison to other hobbies, it's it's 
pretty comparable to a lot of other hobbies. I know Nova was speaking about, um, uh, you know, even things like scrapbooking. You know, uh, a lot of the the, the women in, in our family do scrapbooking, and that's an expensive hobby. You know, the individual pieces and parts aren't, but when you have a closet full of stuff, plus, you know, the cricket cutters and, and the printers and everything like that, prices really do add up. So, and, and I, I mean, personally, I can't think of any hobby that's cheap. No, no. Um, no. Maybe knitting, but even then, the, the, the different skeins of yarn can get fairly pricey. Even yeah. reading isn't cheap, because once you finish a book, you're going to pick up another and then another. Yeah. As I look well, at my shelf. Shelves, <laughs> late, yeah, you, you guys like don't reading, know this. There's but, a secondhand market, so. Yeah. You guys don't know this because you can't see Crash's uh, library, but he literally lives in the library. I don't I mean, have an addiction. Yes, yes, you do. Um, yeah, no, there's, there's, there's a lot to consider. And is Warhammer a cheap hobby? No, it's not. And there's no point in, in trying to claim it would be. You know, it, there, anybody that looks at the sticker on a box can tell, no, it's not a cheap hobby. But it is a worthwhile hobby. Uh, we have lifetimes of memories. You know, we, we again, 20 years. Oh, I, I've played Warhammer more than half my life. And I have so many memories that I wouldn't have otherwise. And the big thing to point out here is, uh, you know, yes, there's sticker shock involved, but it's not something that you're going to necessarily ever need to get rid of um, in your life. I mean, yeah, you know, we've gone through waves where Crash and I didn't really play because of the, the way the rules were working at the time. It didn't really appeal, but I mean, we still have the minis. We could still play older editions of the game. I mean, it's not like the rule books got to or magically disappear when a new edition comes out. So, And nothing stops you from, even if you don't play that factory, that, wow, that's an amazing model. I just want to paint it. Pick it up, paint it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's something... I don't enjoy it as much as I should, but there's something very therapeutic and relaxing just sitting there and painting the mini. Whether it looks like a hodgepodge of crap or if it's a Golden Demon winning Crystal Brush masterpiece. It, they didn't call it the Golden Demon anymore? Uh, GW still has Golden Demon. Okay, good. Um, but just sitting there and painting is very therapeutic. Sitting there and building for me is therapeutic. Um, I, whereas I enjoy list building. I find list building calming. I often actually do it when I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep. I pull up my phone and I will build lists. But I enjoy the interplay of different rules the ma and, and figuring out the math on what weapon options and units work better. Um, so for me, uh, the, the list building is actually somewhat therapeutic. It just, it immerses me into the rules and the numbers and I kind of, everything else falls away. And uh, oh, I love getting the high score in this building. <laughs> Me, it's all about the rule of cool with the minis. I build the minis to look cool and then bend the, the army list to fit the, what I built. So, Midbait still has one of your old kilt marines. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Not, not your best work. Not your best work. But, hey. I'm sure now if you did it, it would look much, much better. Oh, my gosh, yeah. It, almost guaranteed. Um, but, yeah, and, and, you know, and that's something else. You know, a lot of people will spend time stripping old models of paint and, and repainting them. I've stripped most of my old models of paint. Um, but I also have a problem with trying to be a perfectionist. I want everything to look great. And most people don't have that problem. Um, you know, but having some of your old minis around with your old conversions and your old paint jobs can actually be very rewarding because you can see how far you've come in modeling or painting. Um, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Or, you know, you can also, you know, like 
to kind of parrot uh, Nova Star's uh, mistakes he made back when he first started playing uh, Space Wolves. I have a old Blood Angels Terminator captain that has a uh, the missile launcher and assault cannon and a storm bolter just because. <laughs> Didn't know you could. There are times when you want to shoot all those weapons at once. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I digress. I apologize. Oh no, it's it's. I mean, but it's 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 true, and and you still have that model. I mean, you can't use it, but you know, and and that can be fun too. You know, I have models that are equipped in ways that aren't usable, but. They There's also open format play, so if you want to just jot down some rules, talk with your opponent, talk about having a fun, cool scenario, there's nothing actually stopping you from trying to just see if anyone wants to play with that model. Yeah. Here's hoping Ninth Edition comes back with the, the vehicle design rules. That would be awesome. They kind of brought those back in Eighth Edition, but it was just for, I think, Land Raiders and Predators. They didn't really touch on it too much. Well, um, we've gone over, you know, the price of the models compared to other hobbies, gone over, you know, a little bit of the sticker shock, ways to find discount models. Were there any other thoughts on this subject before we move on to the next segment? No? No. Uh, no, I, I would think we've covered it. Okay. And remember, no pity, no remorse, no fear. <laughs> 